Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. We're really looking forward to meeting with you and getting to know you in this webinar. Hello to Lauren. Hey, Lauren Sparrow. Welcome everyone, we'll get started in just a minute. So good to see you all. You're all welcome to introduce yourselves in the chat if you want. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. This is a webinar in our Compassionate Approaches to Crisis series. It's called Art and Beauty, The Healing Path. Our presenter is Megan Cahey, and I'll introduce her in a minute. Um, I'm Shira Collings, and I'm the Youth Coordinator for the National Empowerment Center. So I'm just going to go over some housekeeping slides before we get started. So this webinar is going to be interactive and includes an interactive arts activity. Yay! So please be ready with a couple pieces of paper, either art paper or notebook paper, and also something to draw with. Um, if you have colored pencils or markers, you're welcome to use those, but you can also use a pen. Um, this webinar was developed in part under a grant from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration from the US Department of Health and Human Services. The views, opinions, and content expressed in this presentation do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the Center for Mental Health Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, this webinar will be recorded, and the recording will be posted to our website, that's power2u.org. If you don't wish to be seen on the recording, you're welcome to turn your camera off. Um, and closed captioning will be available for this webinar, so you can click on the CC or more to view closed captioning, and you can also view the entire transcript of the meeting by clicking on show transcript. At the end of the webinar, there's going to be a Q&A session and some time for discussion maybe. You're invited to ask questions at any time through the chat function, and we'll do our best to answer all questions. You'll also have a chance to raise your Zoom hand using the raise hand function to speak, and we can call on you. Um, if we don't answer your question, you're welcome to email us at info4 at power2u.org, and we'll do our best to get back to you. And you're also welcome to make comments using the chat function. So I'll now introduce our speaker. Megan Cahey, born in Atlanta, Georgia, is an artist, musician, author, and mental health activist. She has a BA in psychology from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas, and a Master of Fine Arts in Pictorial Arts. Um, if it's okay, I'm just gonna um, share my, or I'll, I'll read it from my screen. Um, she has a Master of Fine Arts in Pictorial Arts from San Jose State University. Um, Megan was diagnosed with schizophrenia when she was a freshman in college. She has taught in art schools and university in California and Oregon. Her drawings and paintings are exhibited and published nationally. A respected advocate in mental health reform, 
Her essays have been published in medical journals, and she has pioneered the design of peer-delivered services trainings that combine mental health with holistic health. As a cellist, she has performed with symphony orchestras and in conceptual art performances. In 2021, her memoir was published titled Mudflower, Surviving Schizophrenia and Suicide Through Art. Um, and you can go to mudflowerbook.com to look into that, and it's won four book awards. Megan is the former senior director of Peer Delivered Services at a health nonprofit organization in Portland, Oregon, and she's also a clinical faculty member of the psychiatry department at Oregon Health and Science University. Her service dog, Amanda, is her muse. Um, so I'm now going to turn it over to Megan, and I hope you all enjoy the webinar. Thank you so much, Shira. Um, welcome, everyone. Can, are we good? Shira, I just want to double check. Are we, are we in place where we need to be? Yes, we are. OK, good. Yes. Well, let's get going. First of all, I just had to say I wanted to just give a big shout out to Dan Fisher for his service and say that he has given us all so much, and I'm so grateful to him. I want to say thank you to Oryx Cohen for taking over the mantle of NEC. I'm so excited for his leadership and think we're in great shape with him. And I also just want to give a shout out to AJ and the Gift of Voice folks who are at the Eden Church in Illinois. They're having a, a webinar watch party and we're just glad to have them and all of you on board. I'm so honored that you have decided to join us today. I think we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna start out. We're gonna, I'm gonna be telling some stories and they're gonna be about me. Just, you know, that's, that's how it is, right? Um, but so first I'm gonna show you just some of my art and talk to you about being an artist and making art and how that has played a role in my mental states and my healing. And then we're gonna do a, a uh, guided drawing uh, based on, you know, the, the, name of, the name of my book is Mudflower. Mudflower is a lotus. So I'll talk more about that. We'll do a lotus drawing. And then I'm going to give you all a quick, um, a quick walkthrough of a group, uh, art group that, that I designed. We won't be able to do the whole group on Zoom, but I'm going to give you enough of an idea of how to do this group so that if you decide you want to facilitate an art group with your group of peers or whoever you're with, that you'll have some, a tool that you can use that's really fun and cool. So that's what we're going to be. Oh, and then later on after that, we'll have the time where if you have anything you want to say or ask or um, questions, comments, there'll be time for all that. So if that sounds good to everyone, let's get started. So um, Shira said, when I was 19, I got diagnosed with schizophrenia. I was a freshman in college. I was studying art and I was in an art, I was in an art history class. I started hearing voices and I can still remember the, the art that was being shown by the instructor. It was these really scary paintings. When I left the class, I was, hearing these voices, I was trying to get across campus and the people that I saw walking across the quad, the other students, their, their faces looked like insects to me. And it was awful. It was awful. That was my freshman year in college and it didn't go very well. And um, I ended up in the student health center. I changed my major from art to psychology because I wanted to figure out what the heck was going on with my brain. But anyway, this is a, this is a, um, a pen and ink and charcoal drawing. Um, and I give a shout out to um, uh, Gail Bluebird who loves this drawing. Um, hello, Gail, I hope you're on. So this is hugging form. Now, this is a pen and ink drawing Hopefully you can see this. It's, it's called Pain Cry. And I have a friend of mine who is a bereavement counselor. She works sometimes with 
parents who have lost a child to suicide. And sometimes the parents will say, why did they, why did they have to, to die? We thought they were so happy. And they seemed so happy. And my friend will show them a picture of this drawing and say, this is probably what they were feeling like inside. You know, this is a very painful drawing. And work like this is called expressive work because it expresses emotion. Um, I did a series of large pen and ink drawings called the human beings. There's eight of them. This is a life-size human being. And I have a, here's a, a detail shot. You can see the layers of the faces and the, the bodies within the bodies. And you might see the, the leaves going up between the breasts and the, there's actually a bear in the chest. But um, there were eight of these drawings. Unfortunately, I didn't know about the paper then, so the paper is kind of falling apart, but it's a, been a really important body of work of mine. This uh, is one of the human beings of the same body of work. And I always think of this one as being like a, a self portrait. And here's the face of that. You can see that, then come up to the face. And you can see the uh, monster over my face is peeking out from behind the more peaceful face, but there's a monster with its mouth over my forehead. So um, when I'm doing work like this, I don't plan it out. I just start drawing and invite whatever wants to come out to come out. And you know, it comes out of my subconscious, out of my unconscious. Some would believe out of the collective unconscious. If you, you know, if you're a fan of Crow Jung, um, but I don't, I don't spend a lot of time planning the pre-drawing pictures. I like, I like it to just come out. Now this is a thirty by forty inch um, pen and ink and charcoal drawing, and you'll see a figure of a face down towards the left side of the drawing, but notice that there is a little white lotus in this drawing. So this is a later drawing. Um, and I think that the tone has changed to some because just because there's a little lotus in it, the tone of the drawing is more hopeful, I think. Um, this is a this is a pin and ink drawing, 30 by 40 inches on paper. Um, in the, on the left shoulder, you'll see the figures pointing. And on the tip of the finger, there's like a, it's a Celtic lion with wings. I hope everyone can see that, a Celtic lion with wings. Now, when I was in art school, I had a friend and she was a sculptor. She worked in small metal sculpture and she made a sculpture of that celtic lion with the wings and she sold it to the actor robin williams who as most of you know later um died by suicide unfortunately but he's the one who ended up with that celtic lion just a bit of trivia i guess but now um this is a charcoal drawing. There's some work that I did from a very dark time in my life. And this is from that dark time. There are, there's the image of a beak going into the head and there's some bird forms. I'm not really sure why I have put bird forms in some of my earlier work, but I will say that now, in more recent years, I've become quite interested in winged beings. And in Tibet, if you're a Tibetan Buddhist, you know that the sky is filled with beings that have wings and they're good guys and good gals and they protect us. So the, here's another bird form and it's dark, but I will tell you that this was just a dark time in my life. 
here's another pen and ink drawing. Um, in Buddhism, there's a term like sickness, old age, and death as being kind of a, something that everyone has to deal with if we're human. And so this was just a, a way of showing sickness, old age, and death. And it's a, a very detailed drawing. Now, this is a larger charcoal drawing. And I will, I will tell you, hang on during these dark drawings because it's going to get brighter. Just so you know, brighter work is coming up. It's not going to be all of this. But you can see, the reason I'm showing you this is just that I have used art to express some of the pain that I have felt, the emotional and psychic pain. And this drawing shows a lot of that pain. And sometimes art, I mean, I could talk for an hour and not be able to tell you about the pain that you can see in this painting, this drawing, you know, if you look at it for just a minute or two. Now, here is another detail from the human beings. This is just to show you what kind of detail there is with the pen and ink. I use a technical pen, a rapidiograph with India ink and um, many layers, many uh, all night drawing sessions. Now, this is a 30 by 40 inch pen and ink drawing called Mother and Childs. So the mother has two childs holding them at once. One child is peaceful and looking up very trustingly. And then one child is filled with terror and they're together. And I just want to reflect that as human beings, we're combinations of all kinds of emotions and we're not just all one trusting or all terror. We're, we're, we're complex uh, combinations of human beings. Um, this is a very large charcoal drawing. And when I drew this, you see on the right hand side of the uh, drawing, there's a female figure. She's broken in half. She's falling backwards. You can see her breasts. You can see her pubic area, her hands going, her arms going up. But on the left side of the, the drawing is, is a large white stag, a deer. And it was really important to me to put these two figures together because I had learned that some of the indigenous tribes in the United States or the Americas see the deer figure as a good omen. So I thought, here's this, here's this woman figure who's torn apart and falling backwards. And yet here's the deer that there's a good omen, something good is coming. So you can have something tragic and broken and also very hopeful at the same time. So that's why I think this is an important drawing. Now, this is a painting. It's called Sumi-e. Sumi-e is a water-based uh, painting. Sumi-e is the kind of paint that's used in calligraphy. You actually get a solid piece of paint and you grind it with water and it becomes liquid. This is a painting of a dragon. I don't know if you can see the dragon. You probably can. But this is about 12 feet long, about five feet tall. It was a lot of fun to, to paint this. I had a big loft. I, it was spread out all over the floor. And um, anyway, it's, it's fun to work really big, I think. Now, color. Here we are. So. This is called cadmium woman. Cadmium is a pigment, can be red or orange or yellow. And um, just among us girls or whatever, um, I was really premenstrual when I painted this. So um, <laughs> anyway, 
this is this is what I felt like. So I just painted the truth. And those of you who have been there, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, this is cadmium woman. So here's another. Um, I have been hospitalized a lot in my life. You know, like over a hundred times, to be honest with you. And I've been in seclusion rooms um, in four point restraint more times than I cared to even admit or think about, but I'm strongly against the use of seclusion and restraint. So I just wanted to include this painting because it's something I feel strongly about. Zero seclusion and restraint. Now we're getting into some lotuses. Um, this is a work on paper. This is pen and ink and charcoal and black pastel. And um, there is a lotus, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about lotuses. Um, um, as I'm gonna show you this lotus pen as I tell you about lotuses. I had gotten to a point in my life where I was to, um, it was either I was going to complete suicide or I was going to find something else to shift my energy in my life. And um, I've meditated since I was a teenager before I was ever diagnosed with schizophrenia. And um, I happened to find an article in a Buddhist magazine about lotuses. And what it said was the lotus is a beautiful flower and they have to have their roots in the mud in order to grow and be beautiful. And back at that time was before LED lights. And the article said that if you took 40 lotus plants and hooked them up to some kind of electrical apparatus, those 40 lotuses had enough energy to illuminate a light bulb just from their plant source. So to me, that's an energy. And so the metaphor of the lotus became very, very important to me because that thing about the mud, I thought my life has so much mud, all these hospitalizations, all this seclusion restraint, all this trauma, all this unhappiness, that's my mud. I have a ton of mud. So I have a choice that I can, use that mud to create something beautiful, which will be my life. And I, I was really aware that that choice was in front of me and I needed to make, say yes or no. And I said, yes, I, I wanna be a lotus. So I started painting lotuses. And this is actually the lotus painting that's on the cover of my book. But every time I would paint a lotus, you see the lotus, the yellow is the flower, but but see how the down in the where the mud is, that's a really interesting part of the, the painting to me. Those those that texture and the movement and stuff, that's the mud. That's where the strength is. Now, as I painted more lotuses, they became more and more different. Um, so here's, this is actually a lotus painting. And if you look really hard, you can see elements of leaves and the blossom, but I'm no longer confined just by a flower on a stem with the mud, it's, it's, it's changing. Now this is the red eye lotus. You can see the plant references, but the, the boundaries, for what I call lotus have expanded. Here's a reclining lotus. You can see that too, I think. It's lots of fun to paint lotuses. We're gonna do a lotus drawing in a little bit, but. Now this is a winter lotus. You can't tell from this uh, slide, but I took a, a knife and incised marks up in the top part of the lotus. So it's actually, the, the paint is scraped away with a knife. So it's very textural. 
Now, um, just to step back from all this is for a minute, I just wanted to share this painting. This is called The Gift. And I did this painting when I had been really, really depressed for a long, long time. And I had actually made a suicide um, attempt and survived, of course. But um, someone brought me a bouquet of flowers and that was my gift. And so while my head felt like it was coming apart, I still had flowers. So um, you can feel like your head is falling apart and still have the beauty of flowers. What can I say? Um, right now I've been, I mentioned winged beings. This is a winged being. There are, um, you can see the, oh, you can see off the shoulders, there are lines going up. Those are wings. This is a, another cadmium figure, more recent painting. Uh, this painting is about Icarus. Most of you know the story of Icarus that Icarus was going to um, fly to the sun and had wings made of leather held together by wax. So Icarus got closer and closer up to the sun and that wax because of the heat of the sun melted and the wings fell apart and Icarus goes crashing down to earth, to the ocean. And my, my secret, the way I take this story is, okay, Icarus fell into the ocean, but there were these wonderful sea leviathans. There were these whales and porpoises and they saw Icarus fall into the ocean and they swim around and they were all really happy to see each other. And Icarus really is doing well right now, even today with his brothers and sisters, the whales and dolphins and sea creatures. When I was living in California, as you just heard about Icarus, um, I thought that my salvation would be if I could swim with the whales. And so this is sea womb. To me, this is, this just, um, I get a lot of comfort from this painting. This makes me feel like this is just how I would love to go to sleep at night, every night. Maybe spend the day too. Uh, this is a, an early winged being painting. This is a Celtic angel, but you see the, the black marks off the shoulders are the wings. Um, Shira mentioned that I played cello and she also mentioned that my muse is my dog. So I just had to include this, this uh, painting because uh, I love blue cellos. I'd love to have an electric cello. I, I don't have an electric cello, but the only one I've ever, that I ever saw was blue. And then I, I like to put yellow dogs in paintings just because yellow dogs make me happy. Actually dogs, all dogs make me happy. But anyway, blue cello, yellow dog. There's one point where when I was living out in the country in, in um, Oregon, I had, I had gone from living in a cabin that was grown over and neglected and um, just a mass of brambles and weeds. And I decided when I started feeling better, that I was going to create a beautiful garden. And with the help of friends, um, I was able to accomplish that over time. And one thing I did was I built a koi pond, which ties into my love of the whales and the, the swimming things. And this is, this is homage to the fishes. I would have dreams where I would go down and swim with the whales. Here's just a more somber uh, drawing. There's still somber times and Taking a paintbrush and paint is a great way to express uh, an emotion that, like this that would be otherwise hard for me to put into words. Um, here's someone 
whose head is coming off. The top of their head is coming off. But you can see some, some uh, fish up there inside their head. You know, in painting, it can be anything you want. You can have fish coming out of someone's head, even on a bad day. And it's, it's, that's artistic license, right? Um, here's some more. This is Life in the Ruins. Um, the, the city is deteriorating on the horizon. There are a lot of incised marks that are in the blue water, but the whales are still going by. And actually, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a figure here, which is the Cocopelli flute player from the Southwestern tribes. This is probably the happiest painting I've ever painted. Um, this is dolphin dance. And I mean, this is, this is my dream. This is my, my happy dream. Uh, this is a recent painting. Um, in Oregon, there's a group called the Tree Emergency Response Team. And when any of the big old 150 year old fir trees are, are in danger of getting cut down for development, we would go out and set up our easels on the sidewalk and do on plain air painting, plain painting outside in nature. And this is just a visceral tree. This is a, a, a fir tree that I didn't want to get cut down. So I did this dance with the tree. And this is, this is what that dance looks like. Um, this painting is large. This is four feet by five feet. And it started out with just a bright red cadmium red canvas. And um, it is a winged being. You can see the, the blue marks going up from the shoulders. But also notice there's a lotus going up the center of the body. So it's, it's a winged being uh, with lotus. Here's a small lotus painting, Windy Lotus. And here's my book. Um, just if you're curious, you can get it at Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's ebook, audiobook, hardback, paperback, whatever. Now we're going to have a time. Please get your art supplies. Hopefully you're all ready to do some drawing now. Hopefully everyone is inspired, right? <laughs> okay. Does everyone have your, your, your drawing supplies ready? What we're gonna do, I'm just gonna walk you through this, is um, the final drawing that you do is gonna kind of be based on this diagram but it's going to start out with in the middle of the drawing. This is a very lopsided soil line, but in the middle of your draw of your paper, put a line that everything above the line will be where the flower will be, and everything below the line will be where the mud of the lotus will be. So I'm hoping that you're starting to draw. Take if you have colors, use whatever colors you want. If you just have a ballpoint pen, that's good enough too. Um, below the soil line, that's your mud. And what I invite you to do is, you know, we all have pain, we all have our sorrows, we all have different traumas. You can be as specific or as broad, naming those as you want. This is your drawing. And I encourage you to, to personalize it. And you know, we'll have a little while to work on it today, but you can always go back and you know, add to it or redo it or change it however you want. So first, I encourage you to draw the roots down into the mud and just name some of the things that are in your own personal mud. Is that pretty clear to folks? Okay. 
And see, above the, above the soil line is where you're going to draw your lotus. And your lotus can look like whatever flower or animal or anything you want your lotus to look like. This is your drawing. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Actually, there is a right way, which is your way. However you do this will be absolutely perfect because it's yours. But you make your lotus, make your lotus blossom just whatever suits you. I just want to chat, uh, check uh, if we're sure, or do we have any questions in the chat that people are maybe asking about? No, there's no questions at this point, but feel free to put your questions in the chat if you have any. Please do. Just going to add a few tunes to us while we draw. We have one question. Um, how were you introduced? To Buddhism and the Lotus? How was I introduced? Um, well, the way I was introduced to Buddhism is when I was 16, I got a job in a tiny little bookstore. And um, I worked every Saturday. And um, I got to see all the new books coming in. So, of course, all the money I made working in the bookstore, I spent buying books and this book came in and it was called three ways of asian wisdom by nancy wilson ross and i looked at that book and i thought i don't know a single thing about asian wisdom i had grown up in a presbyterian church and i knew nothing about meditation or the buddha or hinduism or anything so of course i bought the book took it home and started to read it. And in high school, that was when I first started feeling unhappiness in my life. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a hard time. And when I first started reading about Buddhism in that, this book, it said that one of the first things that Buddha taught was that life is suffering. Now, I had never heard anyone say that life is suffering. It's a Buddhist tenet, but you know, when I was growing up, it's like, oh, everything's happy, right? But it wasn't happy for me. I was, I was, I was suffering. And so to have someone call it out and say, yes, life is hard, I thought, this is true. This this makes sense to me. So I read every word in that book and underlined things and took notes. And this was in San Antonio in the in about 70, 72, 1972. There were not Buddhists that I know of in San Antonio, Texas in 1972. But I read and I took notes. And then I found instructions for Zen Buddhism. And um, just studied it on my own and did the best I could to to um, to meditate on my own. I didn't have instruction. I all I had was this book describing things, 
one thing about the what the Buddha said though was that okay, life is suffering and it has these hard things, but there is a way. There's like a a, a recipe to get beyond that suffering, and it's called the Eightfold Path. And um, one of the Eightfold Paths is, is practicing mindfulness. So I practiced and did the best I could. And um, that's, that's how I ended up with, with Buddhism when I was a teenager. What was the second part of that question? Uh, how were you introduced to the Lotus? And then the Lotus um, was when I was you know, in Oregon and I, I had found a group of Zen Buddhists to sit to practice with every week and I found a teacher and there was a, a publication called uh, Tricycle Magazine and they had a, um, an article on Globuses, just a magazine article. And that's where it's talked about that if you took those 40 lotuses and hooked them up to the, to the apparatus, the electrical apparatus so that could illuminate a light bulb, that got my attention. And then it talked about the mud. I didn't know that lotuses had to have their roots in the mud in order to grow, but I love that metaphor. I just thought that's, you know, I have all this mud in my life, all this suffering and happiness. Boy, if this can be power and beauty, I can really do something, you know, this is, this is freedom for me. So I, I fell in love with that, that metaphor. And it's been a major metaphor of my life ever since. And I mean, I still have lots of mud and I always will have lots of mud, but I still keep getting to make beautiful things out of it, which is a lot of fun. I'm very gratifying and it's like, it's a gift. It's, um, and to know that we all have this, every human being, every being really has mud because we're human, because we suffer. So we all have the potential to become something beautiful and express that beauty. I just, I just love that. It's, it's just, what can I say? I just, it just really appeals to me. I think it's true too. It resonates as truth. Are the, what was that? Oh, go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I was just going to check in with people how those drawings are coming. We've had about 10 minutes to draw and I just, I'm not, I'm not sure how to gauge the time that people would need to draw. Um, we have a, another um, drawing activity after this, but I just want to give people plenty of time to, to make some headway and get into this drawing some. Although you may not finish it during this session, you can always go back to it. And, and also just let me say, is it, I don't think people have to be Buddhist in order to love the Lotus metaphor. Um, you can be Buddhist, you can be Christian, you can be Muslim, you can be whatever, indigenous, but we all have mud, we all have suffering, and we all have the potential to have beautiful lives and beautiful expressions of our humanness. And that's the metaphor of the Lotus. So, so if, you're, if you identify as being Christian or whatever, don't worry that if you draw a Lotus that you're becoming Buddhist because I don't think it works that way. I just wanna say that for my Christian friends. Um, we did have another great question. Okay. We were interested in answering one. 
Um, can you talk about the relationship between the artistic process and your finding emotional release and or gaining insight from the artistic process? Hmm. Well, um, I'm quite honestly not sure how to answer that. I, I think it's kind of grace. It's, it's like one of those happy things about being human is that we're able to make art or to express ourselves, whether it's visual art or music or, or cooking a meal or you know, giving someone a hug. We, we, we were able to express ourselves and just giving ourselves permission to be human because we are. For me, visual art has been a part of my life since I was teeny tiny, but then so has music. So um, I don't think that I don't think that I really have a great answer for this, but it's just this is humanness to me. This is part of being human. I hope that helps a little bit. So I think Brenda has a, a, a hand up. Uh, Shira, can you uh, let us hear from Brenda, please? Yeah, I'm going to unmute you now. Yeah, I see the inbox. Yeah, you can do that. Don't worry about it. I think um, you, Brenda, you want to just ask? Um, Brenda. Brenda, you can just say what you want to say. Um, it looks like maybe there's background noise. So Brenda, feel free to type your question in the chat if you want to, but I went ahead and muted you. Yeah, Brenda, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Sorry about that. Um, we do have another question. Um, oh. Do you have the group people write their words on the project? Um, you know, this is your drawing. I encourage you to write your words because it's just, it's, it personalizes it. But it's up to you to do it however you want. If, you're, if you want to write in detail, what your talents and your loves and amazing things are, mm -hmm. feel free to do that in any detail that you want or lack of detail. If you want to describe what's in your mud, you know, I could, I could talk about my mud having seclusion and restraint, my mud having drug side effects, you know, lots of mud stuff. But you can, you know, this is your drawing and you're the artist, so whatever resonates and feels right to you. What I just want to say is trust your, trust your own gut feelings for what's right with art. I think uh, Lauren had a hand up. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Lauren. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, thank you, Megan. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, if I can share my drawing, what what came to me in listening and and looking at your exquisite art was I was taken by the energy of the lotus. So, in my drawing, and I don't know if if oh yes, if you all can see it. Oh, can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's really what 
what I'm working on with my art is sensing more deeply in my body. It's like a way to listen to my body. So this was really fun to just tune into that energy. Well, that's, that has a ton of beautiful energy. And I'm so <laughs> glad you shared that with us because it's, a, I can see you in that. I totally see you in that. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone else wants to share their drawings, please raise your hand and we'll see as many as we can see. Oh, I'm glad that I noticed I didn't see a lot of mud in that drawing. So maybe you're more, more beautiful flower. Oh, and so Amy June Wright, can you show your? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And there's a, a beautiful leaf on that lotus too. Can you say anything about that? Um, that's supposed to be a lily pad. Uh, yes. Well, the, the lotus leaves are like lily pads. Yep. And uh, this is the second lotus I've drawn. The first one I drew in the peer support class you trained me in. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> oh, I've been able to work through a lot of my own trauma and be able to put more on here. And I'm really proud of it. Well, you deserve to be very proud of it. It's gorgeous. And it's an inspiration. And uh, recently got married because I was able to work through all this. So. Congratulations on that. Thank Blessings you, Megan. To you. Blessings. We miss you here. <laughs> well, it's mutual, believe me. So uh, thank you, um, uh, Sarah. Can we hear from Sarah Bradish? Sure, can you? Hi, I'm Sarah. So Hi. this is what I did. I'm kind of focusing on my mud and root system first because I'm still muddling through it all, but I know this is the end result up here. Well, I just want to comment that, that that mud is so packed with energy and dy dy dynamism. That's great looking mud. Um, that's, I mean, you've got super mud. <laughs> that, that energy is going to just, I'm sure it's already just bringing flowers through your life. And yeah. I, I just, yeah. I just want to commend you for for focusing on that mud and giving it its due, um, go for it. You did, and that's, I'm so glad you shared that. That's really Thank cool. You. Thank really you. Cool. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. My first Lotus, too. <laughs> it won't be the last. No. <laughs> Well, this is a life practice I find for myself. So um, we're going to um, bring to close these little drawings for now. And um, is there anyone who would like to show their lotus right before we end? If, if you raise your hand or we will move on to our next our next activity. Okay, we're gonna move on. So, oh, and here's here's one of my more recent lotuses. You can see the lotus is getting pretty bold there. And this was a lotus that was in a show that has the winged bean and it has the deer. You know, the deer is the sign of, aus the auspicious sign and the lotus in the middle and and it's, it's all of those things. Um, this is a painting called The Lotus Lover. And you notice that the, the sea mammals are going across the top of the painting. So it has the lotus and the sea mammals. Oh, and remember I st started out with that premenstrual painting of mine? Well, this was a few days later after, the, after I got my period. <laughs> anyway. Funny how that works, isn't it? 
Here's another lotus with energy. And here's the red lotus with sparks. Now, um, what we're gonna be doing now, so I, when I was working in Oregon, um, I was working sometimes with um, uh, tobacco issues because tobacco is such a, a serious problem, especially for people with mental health issues. And it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big health issue and it can make all your other uh, health problems worse. So I got involved trying to help people uh, not smoke, not use tobacco. And at the state hospital, they made a rule that you can't smoke on the state hospital grounds. And there was a, a, um, a little cottage with some uh, hospital residents, patients in this cottage. And they were at the point in their treatment where they could leave the cottage and they could go off grounds from the hospital to smoke. So they would take their cigarettes and go into the neighborhood that was next to the hospital. And they would smoke on the sidewalk in front of these people's houses. And the people in the house would look out and see these patients from the hospital smoking in front of their houses. And they were not happy. They thought, oh, look at those crazy people smoking in front of my house. They got really offended, like you know, people can do. And they complained to the top honcho in mental health in the state saying, get the people out from in front of my house with their cigarettes. So he called me and said, Megan, can you do something about the smoking at the hospital? And I thought, what in the world? And I thought, all I can do, all I can think of to do is to create something that's much more fun than smoking. And for me, you know, that's going to be art. So I would rather, you know, briefly I smoked cigars and I had to give them up when I started doing um, work in mental health. But I thought I'll create a I'll create a group activity, and I call it I call it Art Jive and Mo. So this is this is what it is, folks. Art Jive and Mo is a group that you can lead if you're like a leader of, of, of groups or you have a group of friends or whatever. So art stands for making art. Jive stands for music. And Mo stands for movement or motion. So the Art Jive and Mo uh, group starts out first with a free drawing time. So like um, everyone who's a participant in the class or the group should have some drawing paper and something to draw with. And I, I really um, am partial to oil pastels. You can get them in sets of 12 or 18, but they're not too expensive. You can use pencil, but oil pastels are, can get nice and smudgy and smeary, which can be nice. Um, you can use markers, whatever you have. I tend to not use paint so much, but you can even use paint, but I recommend the oil pastels. So the first part of the group is you, there's a free drawing time where everyone in the group has maybe 15 or 20 minutes to get to know the art supplies they're using, the paper and the oil pastels. And they draw just whatever they want. You know, it's just, and usually what I do is I get, I, I make a couple of playlists ahead of time for, for these groups. And for the drawing time playlist, I, I tend to do something fairly kind of um, either classical, classical music like Bach or Vivaldi or some kind of spacey music or something. This good drawing music, kind of uh, introspective drawing music. So people have the chance to get to know their, you know, we call it media, their medium, the media. 
is oil pastel. Now, the leader of the group, now they, the next part of the group, part two, is the guided power animal drawing. And so if you are leading this group, this is what you're gonna do. Now I'm gonna, I'm going to um, pretend like I'm the group leader and I'm gonna lead you all through the guided power animal drawing. So get, get a fresh piece of paper and I'm gonna, I'm gonna guide you through this drawing, but also I want you in the back of your mind, if you want to, I think you might wanna facilitate this group sometime, be paying attention to how I, how I guide you through it. So um, have your paper ready. And now we're gonna do the guided, the guided drawing. Now, the first thing I see as leader, I say, everybody pick out your power animal. If you don't have a power animal, just pick an animal that you'd like to, to highlight or focus on in this drawing. Now, for me, I'm just gonna top off my head. I'm just gonna, I think, pick a giraffe. You can pick a, you know, whatever you like, but I just feel like a giraffe today. So now I'm gonna, draw a giraffe, but I'm not going to make it look like a giraffe. I'm going to draw the energy of the giraffe. So here's my oil pastels. Here's the energy of the giraffe. Doesn't look anything like a giraffe, right? But it's the energy of the giraffe. So everybody, here's 10 seconds, draw a scribble your, scribble your power animal, whatever animal it is. Shouldn't look like anything but a scribble. Just energy. Okay, now the next thing I want you to do on the same drawing is give your power animal something to eat. So do a scribble of some food for your power animal, your power animal's favorite dessert or favorite breakfast or something. Um, my giraffe is really likes um, Mars bars. But, um, or maybe not, I don't know, maybe, maybe my giraffe likes Big Newtons. But anyway, do, do that. Now, on top of the same drawing, give your power animal a buddy, somebody to hang out with. Just whatever animal you wanna give, whoever you want your power animal to have as a buddy. Okay. Now give your animal, power animal, a birthday present. Whatever birthday present you think your power animal would like. Okay, great. Now let's give our power animal some way to get around, whether it has wheels or goes on the water or goes in the air some way to get around. Now let's give your power animal a favorite hat or something, something to wear that your power animal will really like. And usually about this time, I ask the class, I ask the group, are there any other things we should be thinking to give our power animals? So does anyone have any ideas of something to, to, to draw to give our power animal that they would like? Okay, so right now you should have a, a piece of paper with a lot of marks on it. It, shouldn't, it should look just like a lot of energy. That's your drawing. Now, the third part of the art jive and mo is the motion. So in the room where you're having this, you need to have an open area, a floor, and everyone who's drawn their power animal drawing, they put their drawing in the center 
of the floor and kind of like a pile, but for everyone can see everyone's drawing, but they're just all in a cluster on the floor. And then we make a big circle around this heap of drawings. And then next comes the motion or movement. And what I usually preface this is I say, you don't have to stand up to do this. We're gonna move, we're gonna dance. But if you wanna do it sitting down, you can do it sitting down. I've even had a group where someone did it lying down. You just move something. <clears throat> so not everyone wants to stand or can stand. Some people want to, some people, someone had drawn a, 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 an octopus that had lost an arm and they did theirs lying down. So, okay, so then I start, as the leader of the group in advance, you've made a great playlist for the dance part. So I'm just gonna. I try to get world music of different kinds, stuff that's important, impossible to stay still. So I don't know if you can hear that, but um, now what happens is everyone's in a big circle so we're gonna go around first, the leader says, okay, now when it's your turn, you're gonna call out the name of your power animal and we're all gonna dance that animal. So my, my animal was giraffe. I'm gonna say giraffe. I'm doing a, I don't know if you can see, I'm doing a giraffe. I'm doing a giraffe dance to this music. And then the next person, this is, see, this is my neck. <laughs> the next person might say, bear so we all go Rrr. we all do bear the next person might do monkey <laughs> and, you know, side effects sound effects are great we've had people do hummingbird we just go around the circle and people yell out their their animal and we dance it we all dance it together however we feel moved and then we go to the next person and that's that's the mo. You go all the way around the circle. It's fun. Everybody's moving. There's laughter. The music's great. The music just won't let you stay still. And then when everyone has had a chance to dance their animal, that's art, jive, and mo. So at that point, I turn down the music and we just have a chance to say, wow, wasn't that a trip? <laughs> I really liked your tiger there, <laughs> you know? Or what a, what a snake that was. That was a really slithery snake or that snail was pretty creative there. So um, that's Archive and Mo. Hard to do with Zoom, but at least you have an idea of what the Archive and Mo is and, and hopefully you can take this back to your peeps, your people, and lead an art jive and mo group. It's a ton of fun and it's healthy and it's more fun than smoking, I have heard. So um, any comments or um, questions? I'd like to, to move now, if there's any comments or questions, move to just a chance to talk about the experience that we've had so far together and um, debrief and just share anything you wanna share about what this has been like. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera on. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so it looks like we have, we have a lot of positive feedback in the chat. People really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, Good. It looks like we have some questions and we do have someone who asked if they can comment when there's an opportunity. So that was AJ. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Just give me a second. Um, you should be able to unmute and talk. Oh, thank you. And Megan, thank you for such an awesome webinar. We have four of us in here today. And as you were walking us through the dance exercise, 
we actually put our put our drawings on the floor and we did like a mini version of what you're trying to teach. And this was so awesome. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that makes me so happy. I'm so glad to hear that you actually mowed. Your art mode and you did it. Congratulations. We did. Thank we you. did. Thank that's, you. That's the spirit. That's the spirit right there. Yes, it is. So, Megan, if you turn off screen share, we'll be able to see everybody. Oh, okay. Here we go. There we go. Thanks so much. Um, we do have one question and feel free to type your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you want to speak. Um, Philip asks, um, does Megan give art classes for peer support specialists? Um, this is about as close as it comes, folks. But um, I find that, you know, I love making art so much that I end up giving people Art, art lessons, just, um, you know, all kinds of people, just because I love to share it. It's just natural to share it. And I don't even really think of it as classes as just as getting together and say, oh, have, do you know about the metaphor of the lotus? Let me show you this. And I always keep a big box of oil pastels in my house with lots of paper, just in case someone comes over and, you know, one thing leads to the next. It's always good to have, you know, you can buy um, bulk, bulk sets of oil pastels. And it's a good thing to have in your back pocket. Anyone next? Feel free to type questions. I do just want to share some of the awesome comments that we have in the chat. Oh, yeah. um, one person said, I really like the time limitations on the animal drawing. It helps get out of your head and express quickly. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Was someone trying to speak? Yeah. Um, one person said madinamerica.com has a weekly co-arting space. So that's a great resource for those of you who are interested in that. Um, and one person said, can we drop these names in the chat, the animal, food, friend, hat, et cetera? So if people want to do that, you're welcome to do that. to ask do you all think you will be able to use this with some of the groups that you that you hang out with or that you work with is this a, is this a go oh good i see a thumbs up thank you shanti thank you amy amy june and steven and good You know, there's a saying by the German artist Gerhard Richter, which is that art is the highest form of hope. And I know hope is a very personal thing, but I sure like that, that quote because it sums it up for me pretty well. I like that a lot, Megan. Um, Lauren Spiro has her hand raised, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. You should be able to speak. Yeah, this has been great, Megan, and I, I'll definitely use uh, Art, Drive, and Mow. I particularly liked, I didn't get up to dance because I was so into, um, for the first time ever, drawing a, my spirit animal. I'd never done that before, so that was... <laughs> That was where my attention went, but um, but I love the idea. I'm into deep listening now, just learning to listen more deeply. So I think 
dancing or movement with the spirit animal or, would be amazing. So I will definitely be using this in the classes I teach, the workshops I do. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. And my turtle. <laughs> nice. Oh, beautiful. It's been fun. Beautiful. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share? Oh, I saw a hand go up, but I, sure, did you see that hand go up? Yeah, I'm going to ask them to unmute. Um, Terry, I believe you should be able to speak now. Yeah, thank you very much. This is like really what I really needed today. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, and I did one of my piece here. I did, I'm a puppet maker. So I was doing vines and like, I really connect to our whole body is a blossoming. Uh-huh. And like releasing the pain down into the ground, into the earth itself, that's my medicine. But I have all these things you're talking about in the mud, down in the roots of what I'm doing. I love that. So there's like one of the pictures of a puppet. That's so cool. How wonderful to have a whole body energy of dragon. I just want to say the energy of dragon. Yes, I see it. I totally see it. Thank, Thank you so much. That's great. How cool to have a, a puppet be the flower. I've never seen that before. That's a really neat idea. Other folks. Thanks so much, Terry. I think we have one other person with a raised hand. So Shanti, I'm going to unmute you now. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm really grateful for this um, today. I, I, I don't see myself as an artist or a musician at all, but I, and I, so I don't sit down and do art, but just doing it today was very refreshing. I can just share my, my animal you can see it um yeah uh and you know just being able to to put that out there and just look at it and enjoy and um not have to think oh is it good or not good you know um and megan um, bluebird who's here i believe our good friend gave me your book a, a couple of months ago when we were we're here in florida so we we're visiting and uh, we we trade books once in a while and i've read about half of your book and i'm very touched by um, your story and where you've come now and what you're doing, because I think when we immerse ourselves in art and movement and it, it just, it's sitting in our head that gives us so much trouble. So it kind of helps us to move in our um, spirit being, you know, just in a different way. And it's just super important for, to heal normality naturally this way. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. And I appreciate you taking time to read the book and your feedback on it is helpful to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really glad you're part of this today. Good to see you and sit, give, give Bluebird a hug for me, okay? Oh, she's right there. She needs to unmute because she's about to talk. Unmute, Bluebird. I'll go ahead and unmute. Um... Bluebird, you should be able to unmute now and speak if you want. Hello? Hey, Bluebird. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, well, I couldn't be happier to um, hear one of my very best friends and best friend artists. And I did want to respond to somebody that said, is there anything available for peer specialists in terms of the arts? And I'm happy to report that there is now, for the first time that I know of, a course on the arts with uh, the Academy of Peer Services in New York. Um, the contact person there is uh, Rita, um, uh, oh gosh, no, I can't ever say her name. I have a memory problem. Um, but the other thing is that it's mostly for New Yorkers and very soon, matter of fact, right after the 20th, we're gonna be setting up a free area 
for peer specialists and others to um, be able to access arts activities, arts training, value of the arts, um, and a whole variety of and videos, etc. So thank you so much, and it will definitely include. Um, uh, gosh, I can't say names. I'm sorry. Um, oh, it'll definitely include you. But I just had a okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So much, All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Rita Cronice. That's who it is. Oh, yeah. sure. Rita. Yes, and you know Rita and um yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you again. Bye bye. Thank you, Bluebird. Bye. Well, um I think this is pretty much bringing us to the end of our time together today. Before before I officially uh, sign us off, is, is there anything that needs to be said or um or done. Um, so let me just say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you for the energy and life that you brought to this time that we all shared together. May you go forth and make wonderful art and love each other and give to each other and keep that energy and your power animals vibrant and Use that mud to be blossoming however it feels right for you. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be with you. Bless you all. Take care. Thank you so much, Megan. And thank you all for coming. This was such a lovely webinar. Um, and someone just asked if I can repost the site for the recording. So we will be posting the recording at powertoyou.org. I'm putting that in the chat. Um, and we'll also be sending out um, emails to our listserv about future webinars and posting them on that site as well. So hope to see you at future events and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Cheryl.